Check one. Unit one. Check. Unit two. Check. Unit three. Check. All missing. Check. Check. Units are missing at Fukushima. Um, I see. Hi, Red Chick. I seen your comment there. I went over and watched the video, and that's interesting to me because we know that uh, nine days after Fukushima's accident, the Canadian government, there's a link below, went out and found uh, death plumes like snowstorms right off Vancouver Island for the next 18 hours they flew through it. And Seattle at the same time as right here, and that's when I put out that video, by the way, I took those that film of fog coming through my door to fog again, fog again. So I was... Um, I'm sorry, that's, that's wrong. I mixed those tools up. What I wanted to say was, I was interested because of the fog of getting that there, there was going to be unexplained random deaths along the coastline, and including Seattle, which, which had the fog of getting. And we know these, these have been coming over for a thousand days, these death plumes. And the point being is that there's three times infant mortality here in British Columbia since Japan. So there's been an increase in dead children. And we've had that, I know that personally in my own life here uh, last year. There was a kid uh, that was only a few months old, died, and everybody was completely shocked because the kid was so healthy and the family is so healthy and they do everything right. Their cupboards are full of just uh, organic stuff. They had done everything right, and the child uh, died. And I remember that sadness so well. Uh, but see, these death plumes are coming over, and like nine days after Fukushima, people were walking to school where the Canadian government had confirmed it. And that has been going on ever since. And so when we had the October the 25th, is what I meant to say originally, earthquake... Um, which was a 7.3 in 2013, and they shut down the Internet October 25th in Japan. And there was a martial law and Internet blackout ever since. One one thousandth of one percent of Japan is on Internet. But we can't really confirm that's real. We don't know if those servers are inside or outside the country, and we don't know if they're just PR firms. And so I had um, people dying uh, this year in particular, was uh, was amazing. Some days there were six and seven people had died. And we're right in the pink, in the really high particulates that the government, uh, and a lot of people's pets have been dying uh, here. And there's, uh, I got a friend of mine, I didn't want to say anything uh, till I hear another story about it, but he's telling me, and I know him really well, and I know he's dead, and he was up to his dad, and his dad was saying how amazing it was how birds and rats and everything else were, were just coming up and sitting there and looking at them, and they, weren't, they wouldn't run away. You can just walk over, and they, they, wouldn't, they would ignore you. And uh, cats and all kinds of animals were doing this over the last several months. And he was telling me about that a month ago. And I mean, I, I didn't want to say nothing to nobody because I wanted to hear another story like it before I repeated it. But I think... Because I, I, I have thought about that a lot since, and I, I think that is um, part and parcel of what you should expect. The way that uh, this stuff attacks your heart, the way that this stuff in particular attacks hearts. And then we have examples, quite a few examples in uh, Japan of students in the same school dying at the same, on the same day. And teachers and students in different schools around Japan dying on the same day just random deaths, and this is extraordinary. You know, it's not extraordinary for a child to die at a school, I get that. But you have to take it into context with all the, you're expecting this, uh, people to start dropping. And if you're out there walking in those hard, high particulates, uh, you're, you, you know, there was candidates for that. And so I, I like tallies, so I'm always watching out, and I'm interested, particularly in British Columbia, and Seattle area and California area of reports of just random deaths and see if they're going up because that's what we expect with all this pollution that came out of there and um, I should come over to the comment section say hi to a few people but I just wanted to say that I also have concerns about random deaths and um, 
Hi, Cat. Kerry B. Carol B. I almost got it that time. Albert. Uh, Irinarel. See, still can't pronounce that properly. You got a sound problem? Is it a bit of a sound problem? A big sound problem for anybody out there? Let me know. If not, then no worries. Putting on shows. I uh, missed out on that one. Hi, Tommy Cockroach. I got your video down below. Yeah, and particularly any, like Brad Chick just said, any, any, uh, and I don't get your comments, folks, till 30 seconds after you type it and hit enter. It won't show up on my screens. Seems to be about 30 seconds. We don't know for sure. Um, what was the comment again? Yeah, any kids having sudden cardiac arrest, and there seems to be an increase of that because we have three times the infant mortality here in British Columbia since Fukushima. That's the study. And that's to be, you know, that's certainly, uh, hi Dave from CT. CT, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. You lost sound for a few seconds too, Lunar? That could be me burping. I was burping. I had the hiccups for about the last half an hour just for I come on line here that time, probably five minutes for I come on line, it finally stopped. And I was going to come on anyway just for a bit of hell of it and start just ignore it, not say nothing, and just keep going through the hiccups, but we were denied. No small birds anymore, Dana. There you go, just passing through. Hi, Tyson. Yeah, and I also got a uh, extra, I found a foam from my other microphone, and I made it fit. Uh, hi, Leo. Uh, Ketzer K. Yeah? Hi, I Hudum. Um Hi Baba. Just passing through. Uh Kerry B or Atomic Cockroach. We got his song below that he made last night. And I found that before I seen his message there and I was gonna send him a message because I like it. We need something funky, that's for sure. So that, that's a, and the vocals are good, right? The sound is good. It's canned music, but it still sounds good. So that's that's all that really matters. Sounds good in Florida. Search parent heart watch in news for a list of all the kids having heart attacks. There you go. And so we need, yeah, we gotta we gotta keep looking at these things. And if they're happening in areas that have snowstorms of de death plumes from the death streams that are coming across from Japan in three days onto my coastline. Well, they're actually past my coastline in three days. They're hitting California, too, in Seattle. And remember, they had 11 days of Fogmageddon. And I had it here, Fogmageddon, right, on October 25th, a few days after uh, the earthquake. Uh, fog came in my home, in my home. And that's, that's very striking, okay, because fog can't cross barriers, for starters, but also you can't physically walk up to fog. I'm from Newfoundland originally. I haven't been there 25 years, but it's 120 days a year of fog. And I grew up in a place that still has no cars. And when you, you could never walk up to fog, not even at nighttime you can't walk up to fog. Fog is just a reflection, refraction of light with the moisture. And so it always disappears. Now, when you're in an automobile and you're flying along, you might have that illusion, right, that you're running in true fog. That's because you're going so fast. Uh, but for me to watch fog coming in my door, that's surreal. And that was like this, it was like that here for 11 days. Everybody in this community was like, what the hell is going on? Never seen nothing like it. Well, that was, uh, that was, it started about two days after Fukushima's uh, earthquake. And we know all kinds of rods would have fell down that, that um, pool. I'm going to get rid of that page there because I'm supposed to be over on this page. And so you see reactors 1, 2, and 3, and 4, right? You like that? It's a cartoon. I thought that was pretty fun. And so here's uh, 3 and 4. And number 4, which is what they're claiming is this one, is actually uh, that one. Look, and they're inside of that. That's uh, one of the rear pictures. And you can see they're inside the bowels of hell itself. And here's another picture inside that they're saying is the same building. See? Now that building is covered in rods. You can see that, okay? It's covered in rods. Uh, and you can see a little bit of the pool there. And that's in that same spot. 
Uh, there's no way to get in there because there's rods hammered right through that entire building. And I think this picture here, though, that one is amazing. Because there, you know, you can see all the, the panels are missing. The building is utterly and hopelessly destroyed. And you can't work on that for at least 100 years, 150 years. And so they're claiming that that uh, is a representation a true representation that's actually building four so the media went and took all these pictures and so we see that in the last two weeks and that's the carnage right let me keep going here i imported a lot of pictures for us tonight of i've been at this since early this morning so you see the structure they built right uh, now look at the building four that is sitting on, right? They're not in there repairing anything, right? They never put no panels up inside the building four or anything like that. The structure was built with cranes. It wasn't people up there bolting anything because they would die. Uh, now that that reactor didn't melt down, and because the reactor was empty, apparently, if you can actually believe anything they say. And I want you to understand. That inside of that picture, it doesn't, uh, no, these are pictures from the pool. Let's have a look at some of the pool pictures. And you can see it's really bad, okay? That's really bad stuff. You can't get in there and do anything to it. That was remote. And so now the building looks like that. So the building went from, I'm sorry. I'm missing it now. I got too many pictures. So here's another good example of where he built that structure with the cranes. And that's an illusion. That's all that's about. That's about creating this a fictional illusion that they can do something and get you to ignore a building one, two, and three, the melted cores, the corium, what they call the coriums. And they're gonna claim that it looks like that. And it can't see. It just um you can't get in there and work. Well, let me run that for, let me go back up for a second. See the pool? Well, actually, you can't get in there because you start moving that stuff, it's going to release all these gases. You can't get in there anyway because it's rods, even a piece this big, and that whole site, it, look, you can see it's full of all these rods, and it's just, it's just hell for the next thousand years. You can't do nothing with that. But they want to create that illusion that what you're looking at there. And they're saying now that it looks like that. And I want you to understand it's just a big fable, right? This building was completely destroyed from the inside out and also from the outside in with the projectiles from Unit 1, 2, and 3 that uh, had detonations, massive inconceivable detonations. And... And here's another picture of Unit 4, Building 4, Reactor 4. And so it's a really big stretch for anybody to say that it looks like that on the inside. Would you agree? I mean, look at the building. You can't do any work because there's all rods everywhere. And it's contaminated for a thousand years. And they're supposed to put a sarcophagus over like Chernobyl. And then you can go in in a in hundred years and the radiation should drop by ten. But because it's MOX uh, fuel also in number four, and alongside of number four, it blew its top. Uh, and each of those ponds had around 122,000 rods. That's the numbers I'm getting that seems to be accurate. So there's 80 rods in a bundle, and there's 1,535 bundles per pool. That's missing. And that, that was aerosol. A lot of that was aerosol. Uh, in the first couple of days with the, with those detonations and then the melted cores as it got hotter and hotter it cannibalized all these rods and aerosol that into a, a mass murdering machine that went around the coast. Let's come over and say hi to a few people. Yeah, I want to swim in that blue pool too. Cockroach, uh, Tommy Cockroach. And so that's the design they come up with to say that they can actually get in there and do something, but it's a, it's meant to be a total distraction from everything else that's truly happened and is ongoing till the end of time and 
you know, just to give them a, a, a media, something to read on their teleprompters. And so they got this whole fable that all of a sudden it's all cleaned up and don't worry, go back to sleep. Yeah, we know it looks like that, but we're telling you that it looks like this. And who are you going to believe? You're going to believe your own two eyes. You're going to believe a uh, poorly put together PR firm that gets too much money. And then you can't believe the media because there's no way that that building... And look at the pool. Look at that stuff. See, there's rods everywhere. And if it gets within 100 feet of those rods, it'll kill you. You know, and you don't need the whole rod. Just a small piece. Just one rod out of the 122,000 rods will kill everybody on the planet, all the mammals on the planet, and there'll still be some of the rod left over. Just one rod. Uh, and nobody can ever get your body back. If you know, if you go into these buildings, the carnage is unimaginable. It's unimaginable, but yet uh, you can see it just totally tore itself apart, and you can see how much. Excuse me, I'm a little bit of a burp. So I'll come over and say hi, because I meant to do that and I got lost again. Air releases from the big uh, Tommy cockroach. It says, looks so nice and clean. Yeah, Ketzer uh, K. Third, actually better in some cases, you're talking. I just passed through, that's right. Right, there's a new release today, Cancer Cure Found, an insertion of unstated genetic material to hunt and kill cancers. Um, uh, curry, right, there's a study just coming out two days ago on curry. And they extract the curry and because, and they uh, put it in the fat and then that puts that with the tumor and is able to absorb it that way. And apparently it destroys the tumors in like three days. It's a fascinating thought. I got a, I got a cure for, for, and you don't need to do nothing. It's not dangerous. You don't need, it's not complicated. And people can treat their cells with DCA and the study is below. And if you check the link after, you'll find that. I uh, missed it. Uh, Radchick saying something cool. Char says, Radchick, I'm tweeting you. There you go. That's cool stuff, folks. And, uh, bu 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 hi, Leo. Hi, Albert. Uh, third watch. Let me come down and say hi. Avenator. Avigator. A Avenator. Blue. How's it going? <laughs> if, not, if I'm not hiccups, then I'm stuttering. Wind some misty. Was there a hydrogen release? Yeah. And it's just so complicated, isn't it? When you talk about how many different things are involved in this. And none of them. There is no such thing as a safe dose of radiation. Right? Um, let me bring up that other article. Because that really got under my skin. Um, hang on. New York Times reporter Matthew Wald. And that just came out today. It's over on E&E &E News. The water's about a 1,000 tons a day comes through the site, and some of it goes into the basement of these ruined reactors. Well, they can't get into the ruined, the basement because that's where they call it ruined reactors. What do they call Chernobyl, I wonder? Uh, it's not ruined reactors. See, that's... That's outrageous he would say that because they're melted cores. They're melted. Say that, Matthews. Melted. You know, dick. Um, sorry, folks. And when the water reaches the ocean, just about meets international standards for drinking water. It's barely polluted, he said. Man. Folks. Right? That's unbelievable. What kind of monster would do something like that and would say something like that? That's a murderer. That's what that person is, Matthew Wall, New York Times. That's a murderer by saying that. And he'll have to eat them words soon, okay? Let me come back over to the comments. I just wanted to get that one off my chest. A rumor starting to go around that the Terminator, that's right, i seen that one this morning. Salvation had a scene with Fukushima being targeted. Don't mind me laughing. And seeing the tsunami or earthquake going across Fukushima on the military screen. 
Uh, because they've always predicted that would happen down there for starters. Uh, but it is, you know, it's ironic, to say the least. Now, i got to go watch that because I can't remember. I don't watch mainstream uh, Char twenty six forty three says uh, the red chick. You heard uh, Lauren Moray, and I I love Lauren. She's an unbelievable lady. She is um, extraordinarily educated. She worked at Los Alamos Lab. She's a uh, she got all of her degrees, and she has something most scientists don't have. Something you can't buy and something um, no one can ever take away from you if you don't want them to. It's integrity. Just like Radchick, no one can ever take her, or Miss Milky the Clown, or New Brew Magic 2012, or you know any of the people I got below. Um, but the people that are pushing themselves out, that are getting so educated that people are inviting them all over the place, and that would be uh, Lauren and Radchick. And they don't stop. They put themselves up in the front line in the firing squads every day for us. Every day, they they don't they do not uh, back down. <laughs> they, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, we should we we're so grateful to have two that are constantly out there, and they're not they're not playing any games, right? They're just giving everybody the the, the actual. When someone asks them something, they're they don't sugarcoat it, and that's that's a, a you know you got to admire that. Hi, Bubba. If rice is over limit, they mix clean rice until uh, uh, legal limit. And uh, Ricky Sticky also put out a uh, video last night that I liked a lot. I downloaded it right away. I used my voice, and he kind of made a song out of it, and uh, it came out good. I thought I got no problems with it at all. Uh, he was worried about it, but it's not to worry about because that's cool stuff, right? Even it doesn't matter if it comes out the way you wanted it. it the fact was, you've done something, and that's another thing I want to mention again tonight before I forget about it, because I will forget about it until I get used to saying this. Is if you want to donate to people, I don't take donations. Uh, I know some people do, but um, think about donating by going uh, to your media, to your newspapers, and paying for an ad for your. Uh, favorite plug you know plug somebody that way and so there's a whole list below my video of people that could definitely use that and like Radchick in particular could definitely use more help right she needs a couple of hundred thousand subscribers do some serious damage big time you empower somebody see by doing that on a large scale because she's at it all all the time see and that's the only thing that's missing that's the one thing that's missing. She's not getting, because um, she can go every day. Yeah, she has a PhD in geology and Asian studies. Uh, you know, And plug in my site or plug in uh, Thomas Ackerman or Kevin Blanche and Miss Milky. New Brew Magic. Been at this forever. If anybody deserves an extra plug, it's New Brew Magic. He, uh, 2012, he doesn't stop. Got his heart and his soul. Uh, you can't ask for any better. Yeah, um, I gotta get uh, Lauren's uh, link down below too. Like, don't, just struck me that I haven't got that down there. But every night I'm gonna remind people that if you're ever worried about donating money and where it goes, just go down and put an ad in the paper yourself. And if they won't let you do it, take a picture of that place, make a little video, and send it to me, and I'll rip them to pieces. I'll go and do my research, I'll look at all the stories they got on their site, and I'll come out that night and I'll stomp, stomp, stomp for an hour and 15 minutes. Oh yeah, I'm talking big time. Then I'll email them, I'll, bounce, I'll hound them on their Twitter accounts and blah, blah, blah. How are you, Prop? Your prop's gone. Mom and Ox, hi. Number magic, Lori. Fish fan. Uh, I'm gonna go back onto my chummy here in a second. I start back on unit four, but thanks, Char. 
just to see if there's anybody here. So what we got going on here, folks, is the system is bamboozling everybody with fake uh, pictures. They're claiming that that deer is a representation of inside of this. No, I don't know, right? The media doesn't ask any questions. And so obviously we can't trust the media anymore if they're not going to do it. So you can see the damage is just endless, right? And so that building is not like that on the inside. Uh, sorry. Wrong picture. Right? This is what they're claiming it looks like on the inside. Well, and that's what it actually looks like. And so all the media is coming out, all the media is coming out and ignoring that. They're ignoring that. They're ignoring that. It's endless, like the Washington today. And you can see how the tsunami flooded in there, the before and after pictures, the top ones before, obviously. And, you know, um, I, 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 I got to make another video with all these pictures and get them in the context and pop out another video. And I got more pictures there that I haven't imported. And I got to just do the end, the end game again on the media. It'd be so great if, if they would just stop lying and everybody would just start working on solutions and how we're going to deal with this. I mean, when you look at uh, Chernobyl, a bunch of countries gave their citizens iodine tablets after Chernobyl. And those countries didn't get uh, very many cancers at all from Chernobyl. The Canadian government knew what was going on. They sent up the planes and chemtrailed the skies with the particulates to knock the radiation down, to, to aggregate with the radiation. And they never warned anybody. You know, nine days after, these were snowstorms of death plumes. Snowstorms, like big, massive, thousands of feet high snowstorms. Endless snowstorms coming across that are invisible. But uh, there's a period, there, not period, there's a government study down below uh, the video that you can go check at 17 pages. It's a PDF file, so if your computer slows, you have to close a few windows first or tabs first. You might, because it might start stuttering on you. You know how the older computers can be. So I always warn people because I know that's a problem. But, you know, you can do your own basic research, like I got done here tonight for you, these pictures back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I've done that with my friends, and I ask them, same question I'm asking you, right? Is that, is that lucid? Because you know what that pool looks like. And then claim that it's all hunky-dory. Right? Claim that it looks like that. It's insane um, that they've done that. They can't do it anymore. See? The truth is coming out really heavy now. Uh, I must let it go up one more little bit. Let me show you something. Dum -dum. That's that study I was talking about. So nine days after Fukushima... They had produced a study, and so the government was aware that people shouldn't be outdoors for a couple of days because there's a spike, right, on the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st. And if they had kept everybody indoors for three days, for three friggin' days, we probably wouldn't have had, you know, these high mortality rates of children, of infants, which is the hardest one for families. That's the most brutal thing imaginable. It's bad enough. You know, when the kid is a bit older and everything else is traumatizing because everybody had such high hopes for the child when they're born. It's, it's, those feelings are just starting and then it's just, oh, the devastation anyway, no matter what it is, certainly. And we know that these are good studies and they never released them until about a week ago before anybody got to find out that there was death plumes. These studies are saying that. The plumes from Fukushima. And they're also saying stuff like it's a good time to test out uh, radiation detecting equipment. Not warn the public and test the broadcasting 
government warning systems, which was the, that's what they were supposed to do, see? And that's not, to me, it's unforgivable. And, and they won't stop lying, so that means they're killing people. And so the building doesn't look like that. It looks like this. And see that, that big red thing going into the side of it? Well, that'll never stop. They can't get in there and work. They're just spraying water in there, trying to keep the pool full. The pool is leaking. That's all emitted. Everything like this is emitted. And once again, I missed the comment section. Hi, Janet. Uh, I say that yellow can tank. That's the reactor. That's right. I'll dodge down. That's the reactor in Unit 4, so there's no pools above that. The pools are below the reactors. Right? And so that's wide open, see? Isn't it? So I got up. Uh, let me come back up. Gotta watch what I'm doing here. Come on, computer. You can pull it off. So. Building 4 is a distraction for that ocean, and that ocean every single day gets more and more and more. And these plumes are not going to just come by the coast and keep on going. These plumes are going to come by and sit here for decades. Well, the whole ocean. And the model you're looking at is a German peer review academic model of the ocean's dispersals from two weeks, a minute dispersal of Fukushima, and then, I think it was over 235 days or something. And so they've done a projection for six years off of that. And so the whole ocean is radiated. Now, put into that um, projection the actual known numbers. Say the, tri uh, the, the 2.3 trillion becquerels per second that were are emitted, released, and doing that every second for... Um, well, it's plutonium. So, uh, and that's releasing all of that. Then you have the uranium, the strontium. Well, the uranium's got families all the way from uh, 232 all the way up to 238, for instance. And uh, there's no 237 that I know about. But 234 and 235 and 236 are the isotopes made from uh, uranium 234, 235, 236. Those particular isotopes and those particulates, the, the gammas or the x-rays and the neutrons, and that's where you get the extraordinarily high because this is weapon noise stuff. And so all of these particles and from the spent fields, which are still active for at least a billion years, these concoctions of uranium, plutonium, and all the secret concoctions that goes into that in order to make, if just reactor three folks that are not aware of this stuff, if just three, reactor three was by itself and the things that it has happened to it, that was two million times worse than Chernobyl. That's two, two million times worse than any reactor on the planet. Chernobyl is only one third the size of the unit one at Fukushima. So unit, unit one at Fukushima is three times the size. And MOX fuel, which is unit three at Fukushima, is way bigger than in the average reactors. Again, and you can't use MOX fuel to make uh, power that's an outrageous lie. And so that's how they cover it, see? Uh, and two million times worse anyway, minimum than Chernobyl. If not, uh, if you do the math, it's about 18 million times worse every day hemorrhaging into the ocean. And when you look at just how toxic the other stuff is, where a Dixie couple kill everybody in a restaurant in an hour, or everybody in your lunchroom in an hour, or everybody in your classroom in an hour, or everybody... In your business, in an hour, every hour, it will kill that same amount. Of, you know, you can pack the place in, and it'll kill everybody in an hour. And drag all the bodies out there, fill it up, and do that for a billion years. So what the hell is MOX fuel, which is two million times worse than the other stuff? Because that's the other stuff I was just talking about. MOX fuel is two million times worse than that. That's disappeared, it blew up, it atomized, and then it melted down. And so the, the ocean is filling up with that stuff with all those three, with all those rods that are all over the site from the detonations and the explosions, right? You remember that, right? The detonations, that's what the detonation looks like. And here's a good depiction of what the ocean looks like. It's coming at you, 
and there's no in behind it. Once it gets there, you better be gone. And it's going to be here in a couple of months. It's, it's terrifying. Uh, once again, uh, w background water radiation has nothing to do with the isotopes we're talking about. It has nothing to do with Fukushima radiation. Potato, uh, as a background radiation, has nothing to do with the killer radiation, with any of the isotopes that anybody is even slightly worried about. Um, airplane background radiation has nothing to do... So these anybody that says that all the pundits and the media out there that's repeating that and throwing that into the equation, like airplane background radiation or water or potatoes or bananas background radiation, uh, they're literally the stupidest people you'll ever meet because they're supposed to know better. And by saying that, everything else they said is, is uh, useless. Throw it away. Get it off your computer. Because the equations are not proper. They're not using the equation at all. That's necessary. And, and by doing that, they're, they're not only marginalizing it, they're lying. Right? They're equating it with absolutely no danger. When I like to see them drink a glass of it, that'll be the end of them. They'll drink the glass, they'll sit down, and then they'll just boom. It'll melt all the organs in their bodies right on the spot if you drink a glass of that toxic yellow cake sludge that isotopes. You just took a little piece of it. It cooked you like a chicken. Because now you're talking about the x-rays. And those thousand tanks that are on the site, they got all kinds of heavy particles, metal, heavy metals uh, from this sitting on the bottom of it, gathering up. And the carnage on that site was something else from the tsunami, folks. I don't know if anybody really truly checked any of that out, but the carnage on that site was wild, that the whole site got in updated by water, right? I'm oh, sorry, hang on. That's a picture of an earthquake in the Philippines 10 days before the 7.3 in Japan. And that one in the Philippines, the Boho Philippines, destroyed 100,000 houses. It was a 7.3 earthquake. It had the same basic... Uh, uh, fingerprints as the Fukushima earthquake 10 days later when they closed down the internet and implemented martial law, which they have succeeded in doing uh, Friday night 100%. And remember, when people objected, they stuffed regs, regs in their mouth in Parliament, in a democratic democracy, and then dragged them out. And so they're desperate. That's why they got Building 4. Everybody's all the media is out there showing us Building 4, but they're not showing us... Um, sorry, I forgot where it was there. That's the carnage, folks. Right? It's not like that at all. It doesn't look all pretty and shiny. No, it'll never will. It's totally destroyed in there, see? You can't... See, that's the pool. You can see the pool in the corner. How does the pool get from that to like that? You can't get in there. That's all rods from the pools above it. Uh, and so that's been sprayed with water. Now the blue that you see there, right? You see the color of that water? That's neutrons. That's the indication that there's actually a fission reaction going on in that pool. But they're filling that pool up with salt water. That was taken by a drone. And uh, the color of the water in the bottom of that picture is is the signature of the neutrons. There's a neutron reaction, which means there's a fission reaction going on there. And so that's why we see that color, and that's why that color stands out so vivid. And they try to say that that was a net, and that it was a tarp, and stuff like that. But that's one of the pictures before they got the Photoshop on it. You can't get in there and put a tarp somewhere where the rods will... Like, if there was a rod here, I couldn't finish the sentence. A piece this big. That whole site is buried in it. See what I mean? So they have this fable. And that's probably the building that you've seen they, they built. So they put all that stuff there. And then they show everybody. <laughs> and then the media comes in and says, oh, look, see, it's fine. Everything's fine, folks. No worry. Uh, but there, look, that's the, probably the most staggering picture you could ever imagine. Hi, Jester, your boner pops corn. The fuck, man? How'd you get in that conversation, man? Eh? 
It's ridiculous. Hi, Bubba. Uh, 185 foot building with the bottom of 40 foot pool, 45 feet from the top. This is where the explosion, the fire occurred. Carol B. Carol B. Should I pass it? Oh, you're talking to somebody. Magic. There you go. I forgot who's here. Sure. Atomic Heart Roach, my standings. We are all installing, inhaling the Fukushima. That's right. Must be bad if the Japanese get regs in their mouth, says Dave Lesro. The top of pool. Nuber Magic, yes for the double question. I guess you're answering somebody. Hi, Mama Knox. Uh, da, 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 there you go. That's where that other comment came from. Someone's shit in blood. Gotta love you two's comments. We all we're all we're all gonna grow lumps, yeah, and we're all gonna shit blood, so um if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't get yourself on track, if you don't, you know, make a commitment to get out of the way. Because the longer you stay, the more you're going to get, and the more is in the ground around your homes, the more uh, is wafering up from the ocean. And so dandelion root tea is the most important thing you'll ever do, because that's free and easy. You just boil dandelion, take the roots and all. You can eat all of it raw. You can eat all of it boiled. You can make a big pot of tea out of a dandelion and its root. A huge pot of tea, and you can cook your vegetables in that water and get the nutrients that way. It's got every nutrient and every mineral you need. Mineral you need. And then you need stuff like turmeric. Uh, there's a link below to DCA, so you can go figure that out. You can get it at health food shops. If you're in a little town, you might have to go to a pharmacy. You might even have to order it in. if Because a lot of people don't even bother with it. They don't understand it. And then you need to think about structured water. Structured water is like spring water and mountain water. The higher you go, the better it is, apparently. The more energy it has. But we're talking about a structure. right? Water is one of the very, uh, it's the most unusual liquid on the planet. It can exist in all three forms of gas, uh, liquids, and then freezing. And so that's the only liquid out there that can actually exist in all three of those properties. But like you take a, a little tiny plant that can come up through asphalt, but yet that little plant you can tear it apart with your fingers, but yet it can push itself up. That's how amazing water is. Uh, but they've done these experiments in hospitals where they took terminal, terminally ill patients and they just gave them mountain water. And they took a blood sample first, and they gave them mountain water, they took another blood sample 20 minutes later, gave them some more mountain water, and right away their blood started on plating. So they took a sample, and they put it right there under the, you know, the microscope for everybody, right? You know, this was done in different universities, and it was made into a documentary, BOA, which is uh, Russian, I think, for water. And so the water, what it done was it made their blood separate again, and it, like it gave the, the blood the energy, gave it back its energy, and it went out and destroyed uh, the foreign invaders into that blood. And there was, an, there was a visible reaction in these people. They, they, they were physically, because under the microscope, they were physically getting healthy within 20 minutes. It was amazing with water, mountain water. But it's a long study. They covered all kinds of different angles on it. You can actually talk to water, and it'll change the structure. So the stuff you got coming out of your taps got contaminants in it. It was all mashed up in, in, in uh, machines and stuff like that, electric pumps and all this other stuff. And that will change the structure of the water again. When they done nuclear testing, they noticed the water structure changed for 2,000 miles. And they noticed that in different countries. Those studies have come out. Water is affected f for a long time. And without water, none of us could exist. Right? Like, we're all slaves to the system, but we're also all slaves to water. We can't last for more than three days without water. We picked up a guy who was in the water for 72 hours. Uh, he's Drager, I think. And um, we found him anyway. He was alive. He was uh, delusional after 72 hours in the water. He was in a survival suit, and the first thing he wanted was water, of course. We wet a rag down and put on it because was, it was summertime. He was all just completely parched. He was baked in uh, these flotation suits. But he was delusional. He didn't even know who we were. He didn't know where he was when we were putting... I jumped in the water and I wrapped a rope around him. And 
I can tie all these fancy knots anyway. And so we lifted them up with the winch because you could, like, I, I tied a horse, like a saddle onto them. Uh, it's an easy one to do. Hi, freelance Ryan. I don't know how I ended up in that conversation. Uh, hi, freelance. Yeah, Re Reactor 3 is not being discussed because all the hoopapa is about building 4 and just trying to come out and explain to people how ludicrous it is uh, that they're showing us that picture. Uh, but yet everybody knows it's this picture and that they, right? You can't have both of them, see? Right? They can't have the both of them. Yeah, water is truly magic, folks. So then you got um, turmeric. And so you add a spoonful of turmeric f to your food. There's 700 peer review studies. There's 700 studies that are peer reviewed in, by other institutions about the different reasons turmeric is so good, different properties and different uses because it's so good. And anybody can go and buy for 10 bucks a, a nice bottle of that. And um, it actually, it's r so good for you. And so that's not even the basics, but I mean, that is the base. It's just dandelion itself. It's got every mineral and every nutrition your body ever wanted. You can't afford to go out to the health shop and spend a thousand bucks trying to get all of that. And be sure you got it. And then you got, then you're full. You got like a plate full of minerals. In reality, see, because it's all about making money. In reality, the dandelion, you can buy the dandelion extracts too. I like it raw, right out of the ground. Skin it like a carrot. And start chomping away on it. I all like it as a tea, and I like boiling uh, my vegetables in it, in the water, because you get so much nutrients and so many minerals. It's everything your body ever wanted, and so by doing that, you, you know you make yourself strong. You make yourself less susceptible. And then there's DCA down below. And DCA works the same way as water, structured water on your blood, but it's got more properties than that, and it's benign. It's been used many times on humans. It has no adverse side effects whatsoever. There's no known side effects whatsoever. And it's like dandelion, where you can eat it all day with every single meal, and it can never hurt you. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just greens, right? But it's really good because it got every mineral. It's a gift. And that's why you see it on the Monsanto products all the time for the Roundup, go kill the dandelion. Dandelion is the most precious thing on the planet, folks. Uh, yeah, we're all terrors right now, Joriel. We're all terrors for talking about this stuff. Hi, Bubba. With radioactive hydrogen turning into water, our H2O options are shrinking. So let's talk about that for a second. Say the worst has happened, and we're living in the future, and everything is radiated. Your food is radiated, your water is radiated. And you got your hands on dandelion, and you got your hands on uh, DCA, you got your hands on mountain water, stru still structured water. Um, the cancer can't grow, I don't think, in that environment ever. I don't think it can get whole, period, in that environment on top of that. And then when you talk about stuff like coconut oil and how beneficial that stuff is, how they've seen that coconut oil reversing major symptoms, symptoms of uh, dementia and Alzheimer's, where people were almost able to be on their own with just a spoonful. And so there's quite a few studies, exciting, exciting studies on that. Radchick says uh, her friend just lost, uh, which is Christine Consolo, just lost her, uh, in case anybody recognizes the name, don't recognize Radchick. Uh, people, you should subscribe to her. She's due diligence beyond imagination, okay? You could, you could never, uh, you couldn't hope for a better person to subscribe to. And uh, she sent her a recipe to make your own dog food. Yeah, that's great, because all your dog pet foods at your shops, except for very few of them, uh, are uh, GMO products. So there's no nutrients in it whatsoever, and there's carcinogens engineered into it, the toxins as pesticides. But they're actually carcinogens for humans, which is formaldehyde. The two big ones, formaldehyde and glossophates. Hi, Miss Milky the Clown. Oh, you're to the neighborhood Christmas party. Woo! That sounds like a hell. Got some eggnog. 
I take it? Yeah, you get all the nutrients from dandelion when you're consuming it as tea, right? And so the, you don't overboil it. So you know normally how you would boil something like crazy. Well, this you don't. You let, this you steep it for 40 minutes on low heat, and then you can heat it up to make a tea out of it. Or you can just let it cool down and slug back two of those into your day. Uh, yeah, the Benonite clay, right? And that's got some uh, interesting, like that can, it can't get all the isotopes out, okay, folks? I know some people have thought about that. But I wouldn't have read a lot about that. And it's very good, right? It can help a lot. It can help. It truly can. It's been proven that. Uh, but, I mean, we're talking about 1,300 weaponized isotopes. We're talking about um, everything like that that can help is is wickedly cool, you know? Just to be radical here, use the word wickedly. And it's Mel Gay. I'll sing the 12 days of Fukushima next time for you. Mama Knox wants to know if she's drunk. Could be. It's Sunday night. Lots of people are. No, if you look it up, uh, Sugi. Hi, Cinderella. Hi, Lisa. Well, thank you. How kind of you. I look forward to your company. And I, I hear where you're coming from. Uh, da, 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 da. Built a bunch of silver. Yeah, you're welcome, Ryan. Uh, it's hard to keep up sometimes because I'm going backwards. Because that's how I roll. Roll, 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 roll. Hi, Andrew. Mama knocks again. There you go, Tommy. Cockroach described the red chick, which is awesome, which is Christina Consolo. You notice how much we appreciate Christine, folks. I don't need to tell anybody over and over, but there could be new people here. I make sure everybody's aware, because that's one of my favorite things to do sometimes. Please wonder on the Starting to sleep every day. I don't like it. I gotta get on the meds or something. So I got some crazy stuff going on. Uh, right, you see that that arrow is pointed up. See that crack up in the top right hand corner of the picture? It looks like there's light. Uh, well, there is light coming in there. That's the only damage I could find. And we know how bad the building was broken, right? That building is broke. Period. And like uh, those pillars that you see there, they're, they're wider than a truck. They're huge. That building was destroyed from the inside out and then it was peppered with uh, hundreds of tons of radioactive rods from the as projectiles from Unit 1, 2, and 3 when they detonated. That whole site. And I want you to remember... Because this really bothers me for some reason. All day, every day, this really, it really gets, it gets under my skin. There's a link below to uh, Chernobyl 3828. And when they started going out on the roof of uh, Masha, which is they named the buildings after females, and Masha had the, her, the, the hottest temper, and the rads were 8,000 to 12,000 Rankins. 200 Rankins will kill you. And these guys were out there running with sneakers on. But they were only allowed out there originally for the first week or something. They were getting 15 and 20 seconds. And then they went home and never went back on that site again. Fukushima, people are brought in there and they're murdered. It might take them a month or a couple of weeks to die or a year to die. But they're mur that's murder. Right? The original, all the original. They put a million people into Chernobyl for a 30% partial meltdown. It took a million people. And uh, the first couple of weeks, people were running out on, on the building in groups of 10 and 12. And they could only pick up little tiny pieces. And they would run over to the wharf and drop it. And they would run as fast as they can. And they would go home. That was the end of it. They'd never go back on that site again. See, Fukushima doesn't do stuff like that. It's grabbing the homeless, right? And that's why we're so scared. That's why we're so worried. 
uh, that all these victims, these nameless victims on top, and the fact that uh, there's no, there's no, doesn't seem to be anybody at all ever in charge. Everybody's lying all the time. They lie to us nonstop. The media is lying, and the media has come out and told us that that building there is the interior, rather, of uh, this, right? And so that's, uh, it's a true fable. That building is utterly, completely, till the end of time, hopelessly destroyed. I'll come back over to comments here. I just wanted to harp on building four tonight because we've been at this for quite a while and I cover all the other subjects all the time, but building four needs a few days banging back, in my opinion. That's building four. That's the pool, right? Now inside of that building, you can see it's perfect. It doesn't look like that, I can assure you, because it's different buildings, right? This is Unit 4 you're looking at now. That's the original footage that came out. That's the original footage of Unit 4. That ain't going to change. There's the reactor. That's not going to change probably for at least a couple of hundred years, if not a thousand years, if there's people left on the planet. Uh, planet X... Yeah, and what about it's not the answer to removing radiation? What kind of radiation are you talking about? We got an entire ocean. I'll go check it out after Planet X, but... Mammonox says we got 109 people? Wow. Uh, it's Sunday here, damn it, Australia. Oh, I see. That's a uh, atomic cockroach thing. Consider the coming ramifications of the hundreds of millions with radiation weakened immune systems being exposed to the antibiotic resistant bugs in most hospitals these days. Yeah, um, on top of that, if you if you got no nutrition in your body because you're eating GMO all the time, you can't resist anything, right? You can't resist any kind of diseases or pathogens or bacteria. You can't get away from that stuff because your body has absolutely zero reserves and uh, anybody knows about anything about marathons, right? Have you ever watched a marathon? And what happens to the people at the end of the marathon? They fall down if they're lucky enough to make it. Most people will get a few miles away from the marathon, and they have used up all the oxygen in their body, period, in their legs, in their arms, everywhere, in their fingertips. They've used up all the oxygen, and they just can't make it any further. Their body has ran itself to the ground. And that's what GMO does to you. But GMO does something even more wicked. It's changing your DNA. Right? It's changing that on purpose. This is... Uh, there's a concoction of... Think about how epoxy works where you got one of these and one of those and maybe three different parts and you, you mix them all together and then they turn into something really useful or really, you know... Uh, well, epoxy, it's just some, something to bond, right? Well, GMO does that. It's using the formaldehydes and the glossophates, and they uh, prohibit your body from uptaking any nutrients, right? They go after your receptors and your intakes. That's a simple way of looking at it. And then the GMO has no nutrients in it. So even if you're eating other stuff with nutrients, eat it, but you're eating GMO at the same time, just a little bit of GMO, but most of it's got uh you got to be careful because the problem is the little tiny bit of gmo will block your intake of the nutrients and that's why cancers grow well you feed it sugar all the time too that's its favorite friend is sugar if you got cancer you got to get sugar out of your home period um because sugar is fuel for cancers it's one of the worst things on the planet one of the best things but of course one of the best things is has to be bad I lost track. Let's come back over to the comment section. What the hell is going on, Jester? There's two in a row you got me on. Over the top. Hi, Robert. I'm missing that one. Hi, Alex. Freelance. Christopher. Yeah, Australia's going to get hammered. Australia, man, is going to get hammered, right? Because that's your back door. 
You're going to get it before everybody else. You're getting it now. You can't get away from it. You're in a bad spot. At least in Canada, I can go right to the other side of Canada. You're, you're stuck. You're a ship lost in that storm, and it's coming. Those, you know, what happened to the Philippines is going to happen to Australia. It's going to happen to the entire Pacific Rim, too. But it's also going to happen to places like Australia and New Zealand. They're going to get completely wiped out. There won't be a building left standing, just like the Philippines. That's the beginning of it, right? The, all that radiation. Because the, the, the typhoons, there was two typhoons converged in on, just before it hit the Philippines, had converged in on Tokyo and Japan, picked up all those isotopes, and then that's all running out into the ocean, so it's picking up all of that water full of all the crazy back walls, you know, insane, trillions and trillions of disintegrations per second in those typhoons of radiation. And so that's going to just jack these typhoons, and that's why we've seen a 100-mile-wide eye and an F4 tornado that tore apart 7,000 islands in the Filipino, in the Philippines archipelagos. There's people down there right now that still haven't seen any help. There's people down there, there's, there's like all the pedophiles in the military included went in there and kidnapped the victims, the children, immediately. They jump on their planes and head down there right away. That's another horror thing about humanity is that there's a lot of humans out there do stuff like that when there's an event. All the creatures, you know, the slaves, the monsters, the true true monsters are out there going into these countries and jacking the traumatized and the victimized. And the military does it too for MK Ultra. They'll go and steal the children because they have the genetics for those regions. They already got the dossiers on all of these people. I should, like, I should start off every video with hello hockey cards because you're all hockey cards to the, the big creature out there that has track trace and database and everything about everybody just in case it needs to use it and I got a lot of sidetrack we were talking about the Philippines well a hundred mile uh, you know how do we go from a typical F4 tornado that we rarely see anyway that might travel six miles and might be a quarter mile wide and that would be extraordinary how do we get from there to a hundred mile wide at 235 gusts with 195 sustained. How the hell did we jump, make that jump, see? That's a massive jump. It, like the, those F4 should only went from six miles, maybe eight miles for the first jump, not to 100, and not somewhere else, see? But it's because it's picking up all that, it's picking up all that radiation. And that intensifies the wind and the storms. And that might be what's going on down in Britain, for all we know. It's, remember, it's been hemorrhaging at a cellar field, 8 million liters a day, every day. That runs right up and right around and down to the north where they have those storms. That's been hemorrhaging out there every day, 8 million liters, right? That ocean, the entire ocean all around that is polluted. But it's not running over hot cores like we are at Fukushima. It's not where there's hundreds of thousands of rods were detonated and blown all over that site, see? And it's not... I don't know what picture I got there for you. I'll come back up one. And that's a huge issue. Uh, in the something with the ocean. So I know Planet X was saying something. I'll go check it out after. I know uh, the Benonite. Hi, Mr. Milky. Hi, Radrick. Hi, Lorena Earl. Rest in peace. Crocodile Dundee died. Camera's a bitch with her name on it. No love, weather control, that's right. Yeah, we like they, they're, they're contrailing because for 50 years we've been pouring radiation into the ocean from many, many avenues. From many, many avenues. Um, I'm probably not going to cover it tonight, but, you know, we're firing 5 million bullets a month in Iran, or Iraq, sustained year after year, 5.5 million rounds a month. Looked at it on the DOJ site. So, um, and most of that was depleted uranium rounds from McAllister's bomb manufacturer in McAllister, Oklahoma. So that's just one way. But that's hideous to get 11,000 Taliban, 4.5 million bullets a month. The worst shots on the planet. Never got them. Year after year. And you can go way down that road of all the dumps in the ocean. A handful of 2 billion dumped directly into the ground from the walls open pits. You've got Sellafield, like I was just talking about. You've got Russia. You've got 45,000 drums. 
that most 50% have deteriorated, full of yellow cake to 238 uranium, off 30 kilometers off San Francisco's coastline, under reserve. And so everybody's wondering why all the sea lions and the seals are dying down there in the last couple of years, and they're trying to blame it on chickenpox? Idiots. Right? Dummy boy. Well, that's all at 238. Right? From uh, the yellow cake. They should never went into the ocean. It's not supposed to go in the ocean. The regulatory all says that when they do this nuclear stuff, they're going to put it in the sarcophagus and keep it there for a million years and let that generation figure out how to deal with it. They have never, ever done that. They have never, ever decommissioned a nuclear power plant. Every one of them are hemorrhaging into the ocean anyway through pipes. But it's a long story. I'm not going to do it to you. But Just yell, Fukushima lies. Your media is lying to you. Hi, Lori. I miss Milky again. Uh, how are we doing? One minute and five seconds? Oh, I'm sorry, folks. Okay, we'll wind her down. Wow, we hit 120. I'm glad somebody said thank you. That was like a cue for me. Okay, I'll say hi to everybody. I'll say goodbye to everybody. See you, Larry. See you, France. Miss Milky. No, oh, wait. wait. Do both hands. Chica for Radchick. Yeah, we gotta do Reg. You can get if you wanna if you want to uh, broadcast with me. You just gotta send me a message. Well, I can, you can send me a you can to Google or something. I gotta I gotta take everything I got apart and I gotta set everything up again because I still haven't got that Google work. That it won't let me do anything. And I I can only post comments now by copying and pasting. Uh, but yeah, you can always, like I'll be willing to do. Anybody wants to do an interview with me through their Google. Right, and then it'll show up on your page after. You send me a message, and I'll make sure I show up. Absolutely, you know, I'll get back to you, and we'll work it out. Uh, let me come say hi. I'm gonna take a break, everybody, because we've been going for a long time. Moments, nothing more. Bad chicks, freelance Ryan, Carol B, Lori, uh, Smilky the Clown, Third Watch, Jester. Uh, Starlight, Ooh, No Love, Echo, Alina Merrill, Waving to Everybody, uh, Tommy Cockroach, 666, Robert, Leo, Janet, oh, you guys are coming up, Aviator, I'm going to keep waving them out of Knox, which um, I really appreciate all the work you do with your. Um, New Brew Magic, oh. Microphone, uh, J-Real, 666, Fun Boy, I gotta keep waving, Moments Not Anymore, just be a dork. Uh, can't, I uh, can't, can't keep doing that Starlight. It was working good for a while, I wanna be 24 live, it was working good for a while. I'll come and read all your comments after, after I get a cup of tea. And uh, I'll try to pick some sense up like every night. <laughs> I can't pick it out then. I usually make some sense the next time I read it in the morning. I like reading the comments. I really do. Uh, I usually get, get it the next day and I'm like, oh, I said this to that person or I said that to that person. I must think I'm some dick because I Well, the truth is I am, so I don't really feel bad. 333, DFG, Lunar, Curl B. Cinderella, which is Lisa, Char, Tommy Cockroach, uh, oh, Leo Rap, Number Magic again. I'm coming down. I'm just about finished. Christopher, Spot. See, I never seen you there. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's all I can do tonight. And uh, I suppose I start taking screen capture so I can catch the questions. I better learn to do that because people are going to get upset with me. Well, that was fun night, folks. We had a big stream. All kinds of people, lots of comments. We'll look forward to that after. Was there anything I wanted to end up and say to anybody? Yeah, there you go. Once again, I've got to try to remember to end every night. Um, with our thanks uh, that we are making progress, right? I'm seeing our narratives show up everywhere. I think we scare these people, and that's why we're not going to stop. That's where we're going to keep pushing back. We'll keep finding more people like us. And we'll keep sharing them too amongst ourselves and with everybody else. And we'll just try to do our best every single day that we can. We'll get more educated every day. We'll fight back every day. And the push isn't here. We're pushing back hard. 
And we have some great examples out there, like Radchick, like Miss Milky, like Never Magic, like Kevin Blanche, uh, like everybody below that I probably forget to mention all the time. And we'll catch everybody tomorrow night. Thank you, folks. Are we sneezing?